Ce? Hello. Ce pesin? Hello. Ce, can you start the meeting, please? We can we can hear you and see Hello. you, Ce. Hi everyone, I request that uh, you kindly please mute all your all your all your mics. Uh, we are trying to assist the chair. Mm -mm. Yes. Chair. 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 Uh, Good afternoon, honorable members. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You see, we have some technical glitches, but we are now on all of us. I want to welcome all of you, honorable members and members of the staff, to, to this uh, portfolio committee meeting. We are meeting under conditions of uh, COVID-19. Hence, we are holding this meeting through the uh, visual technology. In today's meeting, honorable members and members of the staff, we are going to receive briefing from the Public Service Commission uh, on this um, strategic plan for 2019-2024 and 2020-2021 financial year. And also we are going to receive a, a presentation from the National School of Government on their strategic plan for 2019-2024 and then annual performance plan for 2020-2021 financial year. Without any further waste of time, I welcome all of you to this meeting of today. Are there any apologies, Maskol? And no, 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 Chair, I have not received any apologies uh, in relation to this meeting. However, uh, the Deputy Minister will join us uh, slightly late as uh, there are connectivity challenges also on their side, so that peace with connecting at the DM. Uh, the minister has also uh, sent an apology, uh, Honorable Mkunu, he won't be able to attend yes. this. Otherwise, from, from our committee, I have not received any apology, Chair. You may proceed with the meeting, Chair. Is the meeting correcting? Uh, it, it, yes, Chairperson, we are fine, we are fine, we can proceed. Hello. Okay. All right. Can, Thank you, Chair. Can, can I therefore, without any further waste of time, uh, invite the chairperson of the Public Service Commission to make his opening address, and then just... thereafter, uh, hello, Hello. Maybe just to highlight, chairperson, that we only have in one hour for Public Service Commission and one hour for National okay. School of. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, we we have one hour for public service commission 
and then one hour for the National School of Government. Without any further waste of time, uh, honorable members, and can I invite the Public Service Commission Chair Advocate Suzani to make his opening address? Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson. Afternoon, afternoon. I can hear you. Good afternoon. Yeah. First, Chairperson, in the last uh, engagement I had with you, I heard that uh, you had uh, a family tragedy. We don't know the, its nature, but I just wanted to express my sympathy on that to you. Oh, okay. Uh, the, se the second thing... The, the second thing, Chairperson, is that I, I, I just want to alert you that because of this uh, COVID-19, we have received uh, a letter from the DPME indicating that uh, they are going to give us another time to re revise these uh, strategic plans and also annual plans and the annual performance plans. So we are tabling what we've done now, but the, the, there is a possibility that we are going to revise them and bring new ones, uh, either with cut funding and also with more emphasis on particular areas and dropping certain areas. But, uh, but we, will, we will present what we have to present today. My Director General will okay. take us through. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair and members good of the good afternoon. committee. Uh, and as the chairperson of the Public Service Commission has indicated, we are going to be presenting our 2020 2021 to 2024 25 uh, strategic plan and, of course, our annual uh, performance plan for 2021. I take it that members of the committee have their copies in front of them and they have gone through the document. Uh, and with that yeah, in mind, have, we, I'll therefore say, or, or, the, or the, the, the secretary of the committee, do you want to say something before I proceed? No, no, no. We, we have the, the, the presentations. You can go through them. We have, we have them. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. All then members have, when we, with have our strategic the... plan for 2021 to 2024, 2024, uh, we would like to indicate that on the document that you have, honorable members, pages four, five, uh, six, and seven, or even up to eight, they share with you the mandate of the commission, which honorable chair, we have the view that you are already aware of them because the portfolio committee of the PSC was part of the induction of the committee members. Similarly, with the powers and functions of the commission, they are well known by the members of this particular committee. So I would like to draw your attention to that. And therefore, if we move to page, to page 10, that's where our strategic focus for the next five years is. And I would like to draw your attention to that particular page. And our work is informed by the National Development Plan, which we know is the roadmap of the Republic, which then talked about the medium-term strategic framework. And the Commission has also looked at those seven priorities as identified uh, by the government in terms of its five years. We would like to indicate that as the Public Service Commission, our work is central to priority six. And priority six is building a capable, ethical, and developmental state. And this is where the strategic framework of the Public Service Commission for the next five years will focus on. And the key to that are the following. In terms of the uh, cases referred to by the through the National Anti-Corruption Hotline, the Commission is committed to, re to, re to resolve 80% of that in the next MTSF, and then also have 100% 
compliance on the e-disclosure framework. E-disclosure is central, Honorable Chair, because it is through this exercise where we are able to see the financial interests, which can also lead to what we call a conflict of interest among public servants. So the Commission is committed to strengthen this area because our view is that it contributes towards building that capable ethical and developmental state. It is again within this uh, time frame that the Commission will strengthen its oversight role, um, will contribute towards the strengthening of the oversight role of parliament and, and provincial legislatures. How do we do this, Chairperson? We do this by bringing reports to the attention of both national and provincial legislatures for them to be able to call departments to account based on our evidence-based reports. Of course, the Commission will also contribute significantly in this area through management of performance of heads of departments and provide necessary capacity building around the management of political and administrative interface. Honorable Chair, you know this is one area that has been problematic over the years, wherein we find that there's tension between the executives and the heads of departments, both at national and provincial level. But Commission is of the view that this is one area that must be strengthened because it talks to the top echelon of administration. And once it's strengthened and it's stable, it contributes significantly towards building that capable ethical and developmental state. Of course, the Commission in this regard will also contribute towards implementation of the six strategic pillars of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy. There is a National Anti-Corruption Strategy of the country that is being developed and consulted with various sectors. It will be finalized and launched, but the Commission, because of its work in this area, will also contribute towards the implementation of those pillars so that areas around corruption can be dealt with accordingly. And indeed, it is again in line with building that capable ethical and developmental state, as we have indicated. In terms of institutional policies, with regard to the commission in the next uh, MTSF, uh, next five years, we will be working on the governance rules of the Public Service Commission, because these rules define the powers and duties of the commission and delegations and assignments of powers and duties and the manner in which the meetings of the commission must be convened. There will also be rules for summoning of witnesses in, the, in connection with the inquiries and investigations of the Public Service Commission. The commission is of the view that these rules provide for the process that should be followed when a person is summoned to appear before it for inquiry, because there are instances where commission might struggle to get documentation from res uh, respective individuals. And to that end, we need to be able to summon them. So we need to strengthen uh, our way of doing in this regard. And rules on referral and investigation of grievances of employees in the public service. These rules provide for the procedures and the service standards in investigation of grievances by the Public Service Commission. The time frames within which grievances uh, may be referred to or lodged with the commission and mechanisms of monitoring grievances and management by departments. It is very important that these rules are clear, well-defined, and known by public servants, so, and even by the EAs, so that when they refer the, the grievances to the commission, they know the time frames and the turnaround time within which the commission will finalize uh, such grievances. In, it is important in the promotion of labor peace in the public service, so that labor peace informed by addressing the grievances of uh, public servants. So commission will strengthen that. It is also important for EAs to know their roles and responsibilities when they deal with the grievances that have been escalated to them by their respective officials. And also once the commission has completed its report, when it provides that report to the EA as to what does EA got to do uh, should, or should do, to, uh, particularly in informing the aggrieved uh, with the outcome thereof. Of course, the Commission will also finalize its rules on conducting investigations. The rules describe the matters that may be investigated and evaluated by the Commission, and those matters that will not be investigated, 
the procedures to be followed before lodging a complaint with the commission and the information required when lodging a complaint with the commission. It's very important because sometimes some of the complaints that are brought to the commission are outside the time frame. And if the, the complainants are not aware of that, the commission might not investigate those because we'll say it's outside the time frame, particularly if it's outside the 12 months. So these rules spell out uh, the, the, the areas and the time frames within which uh, complainants should uh, raise the complaint to the commission. Honorable Chair, slide 12, it's, it's important because it also helps us to deal with the strategic focus of the commission. Key to it is to look at the outputs of the commission, both that look inward and outlook outward, but key to it, we say, it is the impact that is more important because the commission it envisages to have a responsive, ethical, and values-driven public service that responds timely, efficiently, and effectively to the needs of the citizens. Honorable Chair, you'll agree with the commission that if you look at now the COVID-19, one of the things that is really called upon by for government is to be responsive to the needs of the citizens, and, and particularly those that are affected, and all of us are affected, but that those that are more vulnerable, like the poor, the aged, and so on. So commission's work is going to ensure that the impact is felt in this area if it's a value-based and value-driven public service. Because the out ultimate outcome of the commission in its work, in all its various work, is an improved service delivery uh, culture in the public service. And this culture should be seen and felt by citizens when they visit the sites or the service delivery sites uh, of government, whether it's in the rural areas or in the farm areas or in the squatter camps or even in all areas, they must be able to feel that culture of building a capable and caring state. So the commission is of, of that uh, um, interest in this regard. So the output of the commission, as we understand it, we are saying it will be those that are un in looking or inward looking, which is the functioning governance structure of the commission, which is also aligned to the training plan of the staff of the commission. We are also saying in this regard, because there will be programs from different uh, line functions of the commission. Those are the line functions that operationalize the mandate of the commission. Those are the ones that I'll be coming to in a moment. Uh, so I just wanted to give you that logic model that helps the commission to operationalize its, uh, its work. I think it's also very important to indicate that with regard to the commission, um, commission is supported by a Office of the Public Safety Commission, which is structured like a national department. It is one area that um, the, the, the portfolio committee is aware of that the commission is going to introduce its public service amendment bill to be able to manage this and, and change this mm -hmm. so that we can look at how can commission be supported by secretariat mm -hmm. that won't compromise its independence, uh, particularly in conducting oversight in the public service. Perhaps just to indicate uh, on this slide 13, Honorable Chair, that currently there are three posts of commissioners that are vacant. And now in April, uh, on the 12th of April, there was a fourth one that's in the Northern Cape. Uh, it came vacant on the 10th. So now there are four vacant posts in the commission. Uh, just to name them, it's in Mpumalanga, it's in national level, uh, in the KZN, and the now Northern Cape, as I just indicated, from the 12th of April. Honorable Chair, let me then draw your attention to the following slides, which are more important uh, in terms of the, uh, the overview budget of the Commission. It's on slide 16, Honorable Chair. Just to indicate that the, the baseline allocations for the Public Service Commission for 2021 financial year is 297 million rand. But we want to also say, out of that budget of 297, 
2 million, 228 million, which means 228.9 million, which is 77% of the budget of the commission. It goes to compensation of employees. That means it goes to the salaries of the, of the employees. The remaining 23%, it is therefore di uh, divided in terms of goods and services and the monetary costs. The monetary costs will be those that have to deal with uh, the issues around the AG, the issues around IT-related matters, and also the, the office accommodation of, of the commission. So in all in all, the commission therefore remains with only between two, five to 6% of its budget to operationalize its mandate. But I, I know we all know that now with the COVID-19, it is going to be very difficult to really have budget uh, because we are already sens sensitized by the national treasury that uh, they will look around and see where they can cut to augment that 500 billion rent that the government needs uh, as in its effort to deal with the COVID-19. Perhaps just to indicate that the budget for the operational costs uh, provides for national for national office of the commission, the parliamentary office, and provincial offices. So there you have got 11 in one in terms of the structure of the organization. Honorable Chair, can I quickly then draw your attention to slide 27? No, no, sorry, sorry, Honorable Chair. Slide um, 14. 14. 24, sorry, slide 24. These are the four programs through which commission operationalizes its mandate. So on slide 24 is program one, which is administration. That's where we have got our indicators and our target for 2020, 2021. That's when we're dealing with our annual performance plan for this current financial year. The chairperson of the commission has already made it very clear, uh, honorable chair, that the DPME, Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, has already indicated to us that it will be requested to review our APP for 2021. Because this APP that we have in front of us, honorable chair and honorable members, was developed and finalized and presented to the parliament before the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, uh, COVID and COVID-19 has brought some challenges. One of them is that already now we know the country was on lockdown, which was the month of April. We are now on level four, and level four also has got its uncertainties because all these levels up to level one, which will be where we can then say we are back to normal, will be reviewed on 14 days basis, but then there is Nothing that stops the National COVID Command Council from changing from level four back to level five, or even if we have gone to level three, from back to level three to level five or level four, and so on and so forth, because that will be dependent on the infection rates and the response rate of the health sector of the Republic. And we all know the health sector has had challenges over the years. So the, now with this COVID-19 that has come now, this Biden might be worsened. So I'm raising this just to prepare honorable chair and honorable members to say, the targets that we have we have here, as the chairperson of the PS indicated, in line with the DPME, they are likely to be reviewed so that we can therefore say, with the uncertainty ahead and the time lost, how much of this can we do within the current financial year? And again, even going ahead or in terms of the entire MT MTSF. But without wasting much of time on this one, we'd like to indicate that if you just to pick up on one or two things, um, it, it's important to also indicate, um, Honorable Chair, that the, the, the commission as it stands in terms of the regulations that were issued by the Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, which are now key to the management of COVID-19. The Public Service Commission was not listed as an essential service. 
And therefore, if we are not essential service, it means during these times of lockdown and times of these various levels up to level four or level one, the officials of the PSC or the commission does not have to operate. In other words, as much as we have asked our colleagues to work from home, but because of the nature of how it is to work from home, and for the first time in the history, many of them might not be up to the speed and pace. And because we are not essential services, we will not be at the workstation. So most of the indicators and targets that we have here, Honorable Chair, are likely to be compromised in terms of finalization of thereof because of that. Just to pick on two, uh, Honorable Chair, on this slide on the administration, which is the one that provides the backroom uh, work to the commission. Um, we, we, we have targeted to have an qualified audit report um, in, for this financial year 2021. And of course, when it comes to the payment of invoices and valid invoices for that matter, Honorable Chair, commission has over the years and is still committed to have 100% of those invoices paid. It's important to do so because they contribute significantly towards the building of the capable state, particularly towards the small business, and which uh, are important in building the economy of the country. The one at the bottom of the page, Honorable Chair, talks about the triple B and the triple E suppliers appointed. This 10% that we have is what the Department of Trade and Industry and the competition, as now is known, has given as a minimum. And we are also saying we'll definitely meet that when it comes to this. But of course, um, it is tricky when it comes to those challenges that we have already raised. Honorable Chair, I want to bring your attention now to page 27. It's where we've got program two of the Public Service Commission. It's called Leadership and Management Practices. In this area, I will only talk to two things. The two that talks about the grievances of the uh, of the officials between levels two and twelve, that's twelve and below, and those that are SMS level, the commission as it stands, we have the view that eighty percent of both of these groups uh, would like to finalise their grievances upon receipt of all information um, from them. But again, we are saying, based on what we got, we'd like to review that. They, they, there's one that we'd like to say, uh, honourable chair here. Uh, just to say the number of engagements that the Commission has planned to have during this financial year, and not only around this uh, program, but with the rest of the programs, will be affected because we had planned to have them uh, in the respective departments or officials coming to us. But because now COVID-19 talks about the number of people that should be in one room, we might not necessarily have all of them in this format because we, we, we do not have... have and visual arrangement might we be a bit not have much time and difficult, but we will strive to ensure that we still have an impact in this regard. Honorable Chair, let's move to program three. It's on we, slide we, eight. We do not have much this time. This program, Can you be quick? Uh, it operationalizes the work of the commission under monitoring and evaluation. It is through this program where we depend the work of the commission on constitutional values and principles which are key and central in building that capable state because they talk about how civil servants when they interact with the members of public they should conduct and behave themselves we had hoped that we we're going to have 50 reports for evaluation but of course there will be ending and 10 engagements uh, uh, on, on the cvps and also inspections but all these 10 now we're looking at the challenge that we have around this are going to be compromised. But a reviewed APP will talk to what we'll regard as feasible and practical. May I let me conclude by bringing, drawing your attention on slide 32. That's the last program of the commission. It's called, it's program four, it's integrity and anti-corruption. That's where commission operationalizes its work in this area. You'll see honorable chair, that I would like to talk about two issues there, or three. The first one is, this, is the finalization of the investigations of all complaints lodged. We wanted to finalize 75% of those. And again, um, with the challenge that we're having, those that are reported and with colleagues working from home, it will be a bit difficult. The 80% we have there, Honorable Chair, 
it's for the cases that have been reported through National Anti-Corruption Hotline. We had wanted to or planned to have 80% of those referred to departments within seven days. Currently, as we speak, they are, because the National Anti-Corruption Hotline is housed in the building and the officials are working from home, we have connected the line uh, with the official cell phones and we do it on a rotational basis so that we don't compromise the line to a point where people will feel that it's not working if it's just ringing endlessly. So officials are picking this line from their respective homes, but they are recording the, the cases so that when we come back, we'll be able to refer them. We are wary of referring them now, because if we do refer them to departments with the majority of people working from home, they might not be received uh, immediately or receive attention immediately, and then we'll then say they were not responding on time. But we have the view that once we come back and then we, 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 the departments are also fully back, we'll be able to refer them with speed, but we are taking them honorable chair. The last one at the bottom there is again the workshops. The workshops were saying it would be very difficult for us to conduct them because of the challenge that we have, because of social distancing and the contract that we need to minimize uh, because we don't know how this virus work, uh, moves around. Honorable Chair, that's the APP or Annual Performance Plan before COVID-19 of the Public Service Commission. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, unless if Chairperson wants to speak. Okay, he said I can send the, the line back to you, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I, I now open this presentation for discussion by honorable members. I, I have a suggestion to make if there are questions from honorable members, I think members can ask the questions, but the responses must be made in writing to the secretary of the committee in the interest of time. Any deliberations, honorable members? Chairperson, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, who is, oh, I can, I can see uh, uh, Honorable Julie. I yes, see your chair. hand, Honorable Julie. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, uh, greetings to uh, everyone. Um, Chair, I welcome the presentation by the Public Service Commission. And uh, Chair, I want to raise just the concern to say we are facing the pandemic, which is very unfortunate. For, for the whole country and even uh, the globe. But Chair, the needs of the people still stands. I wanted just to put my concern forward to say, maybe uh, if the office of the minister can take um, the, this concern forward for the public commission to be listed as the essential. Because we've heard that there is a hotline for the people, uh, for the community on the ground. They are unable, they are uh, struggling to, to, to work on them. And again, there are some grievances that are, they are supposed to be dealing with uh, within the, the departments. And with the look of things, it's not uh, anybody's make. It's just the tragedy for, for, for all of us to say, here is the concern, can we let the Public Service Commission where uh, be listed as essential so that they do their work uh, properly. Otherwise, uh, due to the time factor, uh, that's my take. Okay. Can I see another hand? Uh, Chairperson? Chair? 
I think it's the Honourable Marathi. Honourable Ma oh, oh, I can see you now, uh, Honourable yeah. Schreiber. Oh, is, is Schreiber going first? It's okay. Yeah. Yes, I see him. I see his <laughs> hand. I don't see... I don't see yours, Honorable Malaski. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, Chair, I would just like to, first of all, get some clarity on why we are not getting answers uh, in today's meeting. Um, it is a short meeting, um, but I, what's the thinking behind that? I mean, we did start a few minutes late, so I, I don't see the need for us to actually not get some answers here today. So um, that's just for your guidance. Chair, I'd also like to ask um, two questions uh, on, to the Public Service Commission. The first one is on the amendments to the Public Service Commission Act. Can we get an indication as to where that process is? Because I think all the members will recall that um, a few months ago we had a very insightful presentation, I believe, from the legal department uh, on some uh, quite sweeping legislative changes that they are looking at. But uh, we haven't heard much in the meantime, obviously, during the lockdown as well. So I'd just like to get clarity on where that process is. And Chair, then if the, probably a question for the, uh, the Commissioner, um, the investigation into the DG, where is that? Because I see the DG is presenting to us today, but there were these serious allegations and uh, investigation that was launched into allegations of impropriety in an appointment uh, process, I believe, for the Chief Director of Ethics. Can we get some clarity on where that investigation stands and what the findings were, if, if any? Thanks, Chair. Can you just give us some clarity on the reason for not uh, getting the answers today? Thank you. Yeah, if I may, this, this meeting is only scheduled for two hours. That, that's the reason. That's the reason I'm saying I'm suggesting that uh, answers must be sent to the committee secretary because we have only two hours. Who is next? I see Honorable Malati now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's me, if I'm not wrong, in terms of the sequence of hands. Yeah, that, I, see, that I see your hand is up. Yes, it's you. Okay, Thank, thanks, Chair. I'll just like to make a proposal just in managing both the presentations being made and the contribution that as members we would be allowed to, allowed make. to make. Because, because I think I it's, it's going to be extremely unfair to just listen to presentations but not be able to engage them in the form of questions. So going forward, Chair, I'd propose that there is a time limit for the presenters so that that gives us as members sufficient time to engage the content. And you can impose or we can discuss a two minute limitation per member in terms of the questions so that we avoid okay. this thing becoming a habit of submitting, of engaging a presentation, but only getting the responses in writing. On that point, I just have two points that I want to raise with the presentation. One is regarding the breakdown in terms of uh, the expenditure of, of, of the commission. I think it's extremely worrying that over 75% of its budget is on compensation of, of, of employees. And as the presenter alluded to in the beginning, there's going to be an adjustment or a modification of this budget in order for it to respond adequately to the new pressures that have been imposed as a result of COVID-19. And the last point would be around the annual overviews of completed disciplinary cases in the public service, which the Public Service Commission obviously is mandated to keep track on, that these presentations when they are made they are not made in isolation to some of the key responsibilities that they have been allocated to, so that we don't engage it, we don't engage it um, partially, but deal with all matters that affect the commission. And if you can get a response on what is the plan with regards to the filling of those vacancies, uh, particularly the ones that uh, precede the recent one from the Northern Cape. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Who's next now? Who is next? 
Chairperson? Who's the uh, Honorable Clark? Yes, I see you. I see your hand is up. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, just building on to the fact that um, uh, 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 this department is not seen as an essential service, I'm also extremely concerned because surely the hotline should be functional 24 hours a day. I mean, we've just seen um, out, you know, from the public a huge outcry in some instances where SAPS members behave untoward, as well as the Defence Force behave untoward against members of the public. And if there's been any complaints around that matter during COVID-19, I really feel that that hotline should be available to the public and so that, that the, the cases can be taken into effect and they can be investigated. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Any question from members? Honorable members who wants to ask question. Hi, Chair. It seems as if uh, uh, members uh, are satisfied. Uh, maybe okay. you can maybe you can just double check with members the issue of uh, the return responses, and then uh, we can move to the next presentation. Yeah, it seems that the two members that have spoken are not in favour of uh, of the suggestion that I was making. Therefore, I can allow the, the the department to respond to the questions that have been asked so far. Thank you, Chair. Chair, 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 type of the meetings that we are having given the time frame of which at the end of that term, time frame will be not be uh, in a position to conduct our meeting i thought chair you your suggestion was on a good faith to say indeed EA the department let's put our questions because they've done their their uh, presentation if you can notice chair even when they are they are represent uh, they are, when they were presenting you you kept on saying your time is up your time is up so that that will get used to these meetings can we allow the the department to 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 respond in writing for this one because Really, we the time is out. Just now. Chair Percy. Chair. Hello, uh, hello, uh, Honorable Soma. Honorable Soma, take the platform. Honorable Soma. I think summer, the platform is yours. I think your microphone is off, Chair. Can you hear? I me want now? to hear what can you're going me? to say. Can you hear? Yes, me now? I me can too, hear Jay. you now. Oh, yes. So much. Me like, too, Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues. Just a quick one, Chair to contribute and thank you for the opportunity and be patient with me just speak one one is that probably let me suggest that but you can consider it chair if through the house chairperson chairs of chairs to say that probably today because of two hours let it be presentation then we can apply to have another 
session where the uh, Public Service Commission can respond to other questions so that also we are actively engaged with the, with the, with the, with the, with the presentation. That's, that's a suggestion, Chair, because my understanding was that we're just going to ask uh, uh, questions of clarity where in terms of the presentation and the slide was there was no clarity on them. Having said that, Chair, the second recommendation I would like to raise is that as the portfolio committee, may we not, when we're adopting the report, the, the, the plans, we put a recommendation in our report that speaks to the activating of the hotline so that people also can use that one. You can see that, for an example, Department of Labor, also their hotline has got a challenge because it's got high volumes. So that, that seems to be a valid point. The second one, Chair, uh, which I would like to know in terms of their slide, in their presentation, which speaks to I think slide 29, where they were saying that they've been doing, they have got, uh, they are trying to do, to devise a proper strategy to bring about accepted transformation, which is not necessarily limited to uh, human capital, as it were, but also how they conduct their business. I'm sure when they come back in, after June, uh, after they uh, revised their business plans 2021, they would also incorporate how they intend to do their business because they can't go uh, on site, physically on site, on doing some of the investigation. So it needs some little bit of creativity around that space as we are doing with our portfolio committee meetings, Chair. I, I thought also the, uh, the DG will talk to, to give us a sense of comfort in terms of, are there any deviations thus far? Also in terms, in terms of the outstanding issues that the AG raised last time, it doesn't matter how much the money was in terms of the uh, financial management, in terms of supply chain, whether are they comfortable that they will address the AG's issue so that we can have a double clean audit report, if there's anything like double clean, clean audit report. One will appreciate that. And also those are cases that have gone through to, to court or to law enforcers. Is there any feedback in terms of how far are we noting that the unfortunate phase that we find ourselves in terms of the COVID-19? But I'm raised, I'm flagging that those ones so that we don't lose sight of chairperson. Uh, what is the other one? No, I, I think I appreciate and welcome the presentation that has been made in terms of the plan. And we're looking forward in the ones that will be reviewed also to be configured to speak or respond to COVID-19. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there any other member who wants to make a contribution? Yes, Chair, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Thank you, Chair. I just think we, we, we've we spent a lot of time now discussing on whether the officials could actually answer the questions, but in that time we could have had some answers. And frankly, our meeting started 15 minutes late, so it's not the fault of the of the officials or, uh, and of the members who are asking the questions that we, we lost some time there. The chair, the reality is that we haven't met for for, what, five, six weeks now? And we have a constitutional responsibility to exercise oversight. And that means asking questions to officials when they make presentations. As the Honorable Lesoma rightly says, we will at some point have to adopt reports on things that were discussed in the committee. And the normal work of Parliament is to ask, is for members to have a right to ask questions after presentations have been made. So I would like to respectfully submit that we just give the officials an opportunity to answer the questions that have been asked. It's not going to take another hour for them to do so. And then we move on, bearing in mind that the 15 minutes we lost is not something that we can sacrifice because we must exercise oversight uh, in, a, in a credible fashion, Chair. Thank you. Okay. I don't want to seem to be autocratic. I will allow departments to respond. Is there anyone who wants to ask a question? Okay, can the department, in the absence of anyone my indicating to, 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 to want to pose a question, can the department respond then? Yes, thank you very, thank you very much, Chairperson. 
our, our response will be brief. Uh, if there are further things, uh, we, 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 will, we will respond to them in writing. Our, our, our response really would be brief. With uh, uh, MP Manduli's uh, issue, we agree that uh, some of our services do make us an essential department, and uh, we were surprised that we were not listed both in the disaster management and in, 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 uh, even now. But we have set up a core team within ourselves, which actually operate on those uh, essential services, including key grievances they have been done, including uh, in, including the line, the, 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 the line is linked to officials who are listening to the messages and so on. So we have treated ourselves as, as, as essential services in those services that are important. But we are not opposed to what the members are saying, member uh, Clark and member Manduli, that we must actually be, uh, government must be requested to make us an essential department. But we are carrying as essential things. Mr. Schreiber, uh, uh, the two questions. Uh, we are very excited to say that the act has been uh, finalized. Um, the business case has also been finalized. The memorandum to cabinet has also been finalized. We have now made an appointment with the minister who has agreed, after I have explained to him the principles of the bill, that he will be giving us within the week, ne next week and so on, a time for us to present the bill and so on. So the bill uh, and the points that we might want, might want to do is, is dealt with uh, clearly. The last time I, I, I briefed, the co uh, I meant, you asked me about the matter of the DG. The matter of the DG, as I indicated, had just, had just one complication that it was a matter that had to go to the president. It did go to the president. The president delegated it to the Minister of Public Service and Administration to handle it. And the Minister of Public Service Administration then appointed investigators to investigate the, the DG with terms of reference and so on. The investigators are doing their work, but we understand that there are delays because of these lockdowns and so on in some of them. But investigators have been appointed the, min, the person who is um, delegated to handle the matter on behalf of the president in the investigation is, is our Minister of Public Service and Administration, and the investigation is going, and it's serious, and uh, it, it's being handled. Honorable uh, Malasi, although we are an organization that does not um, contract out or, or an organization that does things itself, we do need a higher budget for personnel than uh, goods and services. But um, we agree that we are struggling with it. But Treasury has already put a cap on us of saying that we must reduce it by 11 members of staff. We have now already cut it by three members of staff. And therefore, we are indeed uh, uh, trying to control and reduce the issue of uh, the compensation of employees. But the nature of our work requires warm bodies in a number of areas to deal with it. But we're dealing with that. Thank you very much, members. I hope uh, that will do. I'm not going to answer Mali Soma's uh, 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 questions. I've noted them and uh, about the AG and so on. I'll ask that we, 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 we respond to those ones in writing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair of the Commission. That concludes your presentation now and the discussions by members. Can I invite now the National School of Government? Chairperson. Hello. Hello. I don't know whether you can hear me, Deputy Minister. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you, dear. 
Okay, thank you very much, Chair. Before maybe the, the, the presentation by the National School of Government, let me tender my apology for joining the meeting late. It was because of the technology where I am. We are in the rural part of South Africa and some of these yeah, things no, reach out. We to that uh, apology. Yes, but also the minister's apology. I just want to tender it is attending the presidential national command a meeting right now, and that is why he's not here. Chairperson, um, maybe just to, to mention that out of what is happening in the country and in the world, the issue about the pandemic, it will be possible. In fact, I think it will happen that going forward, even the National School of Government, including other uh, entities that are reporting to the a, a public service and commission might have will be forced to review their strategic plans as well as their APPs. I'm just saying that. And secondly, Chairperson, maybe to mention that the president in his State of the Nation address after the elections, I think in or this year, he cited the fact that priority number one now is that of building the capacity and the capability of a developmental state. And this therefore put a lot of pressure on us, but of course on the National School of Government. And that too will mean, particularly post the pandemic, that they may have to review their targets, but they will indeed present their targets. And I will therefore hand over to the principal. Or oh, the last one, Chairperson, maybe, is for me to introduce to you, honorable members, the new principal of the National School of Government, and he is Mr. Busani Ngaweni. He is a professor and therefore somebody who did go to school and, and very much learn it. And we are very happy that now we have a principal of this school. And I want to believe that you're going to welcome him, a chairperson, and the, and, and the members of the portfolio committee, and he will receive some support from yourselves, particularly on the eve of this pandemic, with all the challenges and with all the pressures that are there, with all the reviews, with all the resources that we don't have as a country, but expected to deliver services to the people of South Africa. I thank you, Chairperson. I hand over to the principal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, uh, welcome, uh, principal. I know him personally very much. He's a good, he's a good <laughs> chair. <laughs> uh, thank you, you uh, Professor Ngawini. I know him very much. Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson, uh, members of the committee, and the uh, Deputy uh, Minister. Uh, thank you for that uh, generous <clears throat> uh, introduction. Uh, I hope that you can see me. Um, I will load the presentation uh, here, which I'll be which I'll be doing. the The presentation is rather long, but it is not our intention to you know go through each and every slide in the in the presentation uh, necessarily, uh, because I think the honourable members already have the copies of the presentation. We would like to, you know, engage with the um, members of the committee beyond today, uh, today's meeting. Uh, there are, you know, things that we would like to share with the commission with regards to, with, with them, with the committee, with regards to some of the, you know, exciting changes that we wish to make here at the, here at the, at the, at the NSG. So, um, we hope that this will not be the last interaction that we are going to have with the committee. We, there are things that uh, we wish to engage with the committee on. Um, as it has been indicated, um, we are meeting in this context of, uh, of COVID-19. And uh, COVID-19 presents a number of uh, challenges for us as a as an as an institution 
just as there are challenges for all other you know institutions whose work is based on on conduct so as an institution uh, because we are unable to have contact with students at the moment we 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 are unable then to to have the normal training that we that we have and this is having a significant uh, impact on our on our work as a as the school school of government because just to give you a sense uh, you know honorable chair and members of the committee just to give you a sense that the NSG currently is is losing over 10 and a half million rands a month as a result of the suspension of the training uh, of the training sessions and we will not be able to to recoup uh, some of these uh, some of these resources we will not be able to recoup some of these uh, some of these resources unless we resume the training uh, uh, the training programs again so that is the extent of the impact of covid in the life of the nsg uh, currently as the members are aware as the members are aware the nsg you know survives by charging user fees we charge user fees to students 80 percent of our budget is self-generated and 20 percent comes from the budget uh, come from the budget vote and uh, as a as a result then when we have caused the programs that are suspended as is the case currently uh, that means that we we're losing revenues as i'm saying uh, we are losing uh, by the end of this month we will have lost about 20 million rands because we are unable to have face to face uh, face to face uh, training and we have tried in our strategic plan in fact to to indicate that this is our new reality as the as the as, as the nsg and it's affecting the entire education and training landscape um, uh, as it were as the members are aware i'll run through this quickly we have a constitutional mandate drawn from chapter section 195 of the constitution which says that the state must build a good human resource management and career development uh, practices cultivate and maximize human uh, potential that is in fact the where the mandate of the nsg is derived from and that is how we are repositioning the school in order to meet this constitutional uh, mandate in fact uh, we have a public service act which gives the powers to the minister of this psa to set up an institute like ours and the public um, administration management act goes further to say we must offer training which must be quality which must be recognized which must be uh, accredited further on the on the legislative um, you know mandate this is a graphic representation of what our mandate our mandate is and that is how we organize this is how we organize the work uh, that we are doing as an as, a, as an nsg so part of our strategy is to provide training directly we support institutional development we foster collaboration and we give a few examples we offer qualifications again there are examples there our mandate has been expanded we now must intervene in you know across the public sector which includes all organs of state as well as the local government sphere uh, of, of government in many instances we do this work directly or we influence or we or, or we refer members of the committee may notice that um, at the bottom of these slides our motto is learn serve and grow we've adopted this very deliberately because our view is as nsg and government in general we must prov provide or cultivate an ecosystem where public servants learn because learning enables them to serve and serve better and efficiently but most importantly public servants must grow out of the out of this um, out of this experience because you know there are people who have got the you know uh, interest and ambitions to grow in the service and that growth becomes possible if they are able to learn and they serve uh, 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 qualitatively uh, as we are aware you know in the national development plan as well as in the mtsf which is basically a five-year plan for implementing the 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 national development plan 
the first priority is now the building of state capacity you know uh, capable and ethical you know developmental stage is now number one priority this means that the national school of government has moved from where it was in the back benches if i can use that colloquially of the back benches of government department into the front benches into the front row uh, because this uh, changes of the priorities and making state capacity building a number one priority it means the, there's going to be a lot of expectations from the uh, from the NSG and as NSG we we reshaping and remodeling ourselves such that we can respond to the challenge uh, you know before us serving the legislative sector as well as the third sphere of government which is local government presents exciting uh, you know challenges for us as the NSG and we are getting ourselves to expand our program offerings in that regard our strategic plan you know is, has been refocused in a sense that we must be able to fulfill our mandate as defined in law but most important honorable members we are now humble enough to recognize that as NSG we can make an impact if we intervene directly by that, I mean, we bring people into the programs of the NSG and we provide training ourselves as a school using the professionals within NSG, using a network of independent contractors, but most importantly, using the, the government, senior government employees who are going through our train the trainer uh, programs and we are expanding our horizon in that regard. Secondly, Prof, Prof Hello. I, I'm getting questions from members that they, 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 you don't indicate uh, the, the, the slide number. Oh, I'm sorry, I will indicate this slide, slide number can now. Can you slide your, your presentation so that members can, can go along the printization with you? Okay. Let me do so. Okay. okay. Uh, can you see it now, Chair? Yes, I can see it. Can can other members see Okay, that? with slide number 11. Oh, okay. Okay, as I was indicating, Chair, apologies, I didn't realize that you couldn't see it, but as I was indicating, our strategy is to is a, is a, is a multi-pronged, that our mandate says we must be the premier provider of education and training uh, in, 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 in government that is founded in law, and we're doing exactly, exact, we're doing exactly that. Secondly, we recognize that per this mandate, we must provide training directly as the National School of Government. This means that using the professionals here, using our independent contractors, and using a large pool of senior public servants who are being trained to become trainers, will be able to provide training, uh, training directly across the public care uh, across the public can they see it okay provide training across the public service secondly we recognize chair that the nsg is because legislation says so is in a better position to influence the content so in the coming months you will see a number of uh, you know programs done by ourselves in partnership with higher education institutions where we influence the content of what is being provided by others and lastly that we must be able to refer so by this i mean if you have a, a training intervention at the lowest levels of um, you know in, in the public service and you realize you, you do a training and development needs analysis and is a kind of a program required is what the nsg is unable to provide we must be able to refer so that's part of the career you know, uh, guidance, if you can call it that, with the National School of Government must do. Going forward, our, you know, interventions must be of high impact, high quality, and as I indicated, for us to reach scale that we're looking for, it means that we must foster a lot more 
or partnerships that we have done uh, uh, in the in the past. Very briefly, on our on our vision is to build an ethical and capable public sector in the service of South Africans, and our mission is to empower public servants to be responsive to their needs. And it's important that we, we put it this way, that they must be responsive, because we mustn't give people skills that are static, because the challenges of society change all the time, and the public servants must have the kind of portable skills that will help them uh, to, to navigate through the challenges that people are facing every day. This is the impact statement about improving our organizational uh, you know, performance. As I've mentioned before, we have this challenge that every percent of our budget is self-generated. Under COVID, we suspend our training. We lose 10.5 million rands a month in revenue. We only remain, we only remain with uh, what is voted by Treasury. But also in the past, and you might have seen this in the report of the AG, there were problems with our trade account. And those problems arise as a result of departments paying to NSG, but public servants not showing up, not taking those training opportunities that are available to them. And that money remained in a trade account for a long period. And we cannot actually account for it as being, a, as being revenue. We are attending to this uh, matter because if people have not been attending training programs and it's been paid for, we believe that after a year or so, they must forfeit that money because it will resolve some of the issues that the AG has, uh, has recognized in our, uh, in, in, in our report uh, in, in the past. Very briefly here, Chair, this is the most important part of the repositioning, is that our interventions will be focusing uh, across the value chain of the public service. So number one, at a senior level, it's important that all senior managers are inducted and we are increasing our ability to do that. With COVID, because we can't have contact sessions, we will move some of this some of this work to do it uh, online using platforms like the ones we are using now. Importantly, there, Chair, we will be launching a school of um, a winter school on economic governance targeted at uh, elected officials, ministers, deputy ministers, premiers, MECs, and levels below that. Because we do recognize that if we strengthen our interventions by training those who are executing authorities on economic governance will see a lot more you know changes in the performance of the state and and lastly uh, at the bottom there we continue to increase our interventions on program targeted at young people through the cadet program as the chair is aware and dpsa will explain this when they appear before the committee the intents in government now spend two years instead of one year this gives them more quality experience because they're there over, over, over two years. There is, a, an intention, there is an induction program which the NSG administers through these intents, but we've also intervened by training people uh, who are as, as aspirant employees in the public uh, service. There's a program on gender mainstreaming, which we are upscaling, and uh, we also tightening um, you know, our ability to scale up the program on anti on anti corruption these are some of the key interventions uh, here the most important thing to indicate is that the nsg will be launching full qualifications in the coming in the coming months this is part of our key deliverable in the strategic plan in fact it's two qualifications we're looking at one is on pub public leadership internally another one is on leadership in the continent because working with the partner institutions in the in the admin which is a, a network of schools of government across the across across the across the continent i will jump straight chair to this particular slide so the minister and the deputy minister challenged the nsg that because we've got this lockdown we can then suspend all the activities and wait until after the lockdown has been removed so part of our mandate is that we can determine what is called compulsory programs or programs that become a prerequisite for people moving to other levels of government so during this lockdown we've encouraged public servants who wish to join the senior management service in government and we introduced a, a program called nugela which is compulsory this means that you cannot be a senior manager in government unless we've done this program called nugela which basically is a program that forces people to read and appreciate fully 
chapter four of the SMS uh, handbook. You must know the PFNA, you must know the constitution, and you must subscribe to some of the values that are enshrined in, uh, in the constitution, in particular um, uh, in uh, section 195 of the constitution. And these are some of the numbers that we have achieved just during this lockdown uh, uh, period. The program is called New Gala. And even people who are not members of, we are not working for government, who work outside in the private sector, who wish to join government, senior management, they have to do this, this program. It's an indication of how we are scaling up our capacity to do programs, uh, uh, programs uh, on, on, online. Let me jump to, you know, some of what is contained in our, uh, in, in our strategic plan and in in our APP. So in this slide, for example, slide number 20, uh, chair and members of the committee, we're indicating there that we will be bringing new programs, training board members in SOEs, uh, we think it's important that we must take them through a, a you know, program in partnership with the Institute of Directors. We'll be training chief of staff, we'll be training media liaison officers. And in as far as parliament is concerned, it is what we want to engage the committee on going forward. We wish to train, we used to have a program that trained members of parliament over the past five years. We are renewing that MOU with the parliament, we're in talks with the secretary of parliament, so we increase the numbers of members of parliament who go through those programs, which are offered by universities. Uh, these are formal national you know, diplomas and, uh, and certificates. So we are resuming that conversation with the Secretary of Parliament to increase that. But in particular, we wish to roll out a massive program of training, support staff of portfolio committees, in particular, the researchers. The researchers of portfolio committees and guided by this committee, we also want to include researchers of the of the caucuses. These in you know basic and advanced skills in research, so that those who support committees, uh, you know, are fully equipped to do their work as researchers uh, in, in 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 parliament. As I've said, we've got a partnership program in place. We have a partnership with the National Academy of Governance in China. Uh, in, in, in France, we've got support from the, from the EU. We are doing Project Kaedu in the continent now at a much more bigger, much more bigger scale. We've got a public uh, sector training forum where we are engaging on how we can you know, master the practice of training, public, of training public servants. Partnering with the um, higher education institutions, uh, the committee will be happy to know that in the next two weeks, we will actually be launching a, a partnership program with five universities, which will see over 5,000, uh, you know, public servants trained in some of the programs that I have projected now. So we're using these capabilities that are available in universities, such as um, University of uh, Free State, as indicated here, Northwest Free State, the Western Cape, as well as TUT, and we'll be covering all the provinces using this. We use the, you know, a public tender process to recruit these universities, and they are the ones who are offering programs. Apart from the training people will receive, honorable members, we need to note that in many of these cases, people who go through these programs will receive credits to do honors and master's qualifications beyond participating in these uh, in these programs. Internally, we've done some reorganization uh, of the institution. So those are the branches we have. We've realigned. We are not creating new posts. We've lost uh, revenue. So we are trying to make do with the resources that we have. This is the employment equity profile of the institution. We've got a lot more women, uh, especially in senior men, in fact, across the organization and in particular uh, at senior management level, which is important for us. We recognize we must increase our recruitment of much younger people because those numbers have dropped, have dropped uh, over, over, have dropped over time, but we, we do meet our employment equity, um, you know, uh, uh, target as an organization. I will not take the members through this because it's already a put, you know, available to the committee, safe to say under the APP, we will be reorganizing our ICT ecosystem because our future is in e-learning, our future is in embedded 
is in blended training by using platforms like these ones and other forms of online uh, training. That is where we will need a much more uh, investment going forward. So we're modernizing our business processes and changing our ICT ecosystem so that if we're training members of parliament, we can train them wherever they are using instruments like these ones and online, but we are sensitive to the fact that not everybody has got tools like laptops and um, you know 3G or 4G or 5G. So we will use blended approaches so that we do not leave any member of the public service out of the programs that we need to that that we need to uh, to roll out. Uh, lastly, on the APP, we're going to be intensifying our training of uh, trainers so that we provide the quality in terms of the training program that we provide. And these are key because you can have the best trainers, the best professors in the country who may not be able to use technology to provide training to 100 people dispersed all over the country. So we will be empowering them in the coming days uh, to be able to do so. As I've indicated, uh, this is our, our budget uh, as it stands. This is from the vote. On the vote account, our budget is 206 uh, million. The important one is this one, honorable members. As I said, we're losing more than, 20, more than 20 million by the end of this month, and our target is 132. And National Treasury does give us the guidance on how much we can charge on our programs. If we go online, the most we can charge for online training is 332 rands. You will need to have 70,000 people or so joining NSG program for us to cover the 132. Otherwise, 80% of our expenses will not be covered. So that's the target we are, changing, we are chasing, which is 132 million rands for us to remain sustainable as an organization. And we are putting up strategies to recover as soon as we move to levels two and one of COVID, because currently we are unable in fact, uh, to survive under the circumstances. But we're not using this time luxuring at home. We're doing train the trainer programs, we're incubating ideas, we're redesigning the organization such that when we move to levels two and three, we will be able to ramp up our training programs. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll end there. Let me thank the DM and the, and the prof. Now the the presentation is open for discussion by honorable members. Can I show hands? Honorable members, I don't see. I, I, I see, I see, Honorable Ndoli. Th thank you, Chairperson. Me too, Chair. I can go to hotel and do call and watch our Bonacala, Honorable Big It will be you after, 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 after Ndoli. Okay, Chair, thanks. Chair, thank can, you. You, can you see me, Chair? Yes, I can, uh, Honorable Lesom. You'll, you'll follow that. It is Nduli Kibi Lesom. Thank you, Chair. Chair, we welcome the presentation by Prof, and we also welcome Prof as the newly appointed principal of the National School of, of Government. Chair, one is very much impressed to hear that at the School of Government is precisely on the call by the committee on some of the issues that Prophet mentioned here. But uh, Chairperson, to start with the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, we don't know as to when this pandemic will sort of um, allow us to go to other levels. Uh, apparently your, your, your level one, which we are all looking forward to. To say, what, what, what is the long-term strategy 
that the National School of Government is sort of devising to face such times. For instance, uh, we've had a, 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 the Department of a Basic Education and Higher Education, they are going to embark uh, on the online sort of um, planning. Having mentioned the programs, the ongoing programs with departments, particularly the interns and, and other programs mentioned, for sure, that can be very much easy uh, to, 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 to strategize because you know as to whom you are dealing with, you are not on the recruitment uh, basis. To Chaperson, I wanted to check something. Um, as a country, we are busy on the backing on the district uh, development uh, model to say, to say, uh, are they sort of um, um, seeing um, the school of government cascading down to other uh, spheres of government in terms of uh, uh, skills and training? And um, Chair, uh, Chair, lastly, uh, there are some there are some programs that are non credited. Now I wanted to check as to how much those uh, programs can motivate um, the people to embark on, or or else um, they can be used otherwise. Maybe um, as as bridging causes, so that they have that kumfu other than uh, being let, uh, left open like that. Uh, and lastly, chair, hence the the school now is going to compete with the institutions of uh, higher learning. I wanted to check something as to whether they've been assessed and approved properly because at some stages you will find that uh, there will be programs for learning but at the end of the, the those programs people expecting when people expecting uh, their qualifications only find that they they don't get those qualifications because they were not um the, 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 the channels were not uh, properly uh, uh, followed. Thank you. Honorable KB. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, let me uh, greet uh, the Honorable Members and also welcome the, the Professor. You are welcome, my brother. Uh, Honorable Chair, mine is uh, the SONA made reference to the empowerment of youth and uh, inclusion of persons with disabilities in employment equity. In the pre uh, uh, presentation, it shows that there is a decrease in, uh, in the empowerment of uh, persons with disability and youth as compared to the previous year. I, I just want to know what could have led to the regress. My second one, Chair, is on the expansion of the school to offer training to local government, SOEs, and organs of, of state. Does the school have the capacity at a provincial level to offer these trainings? And does the school have the capacity within the current organogram to provide training to the local government uh, SOEs and organs of uh, the state without outsourcing some of this training to service providers that are outside? Uh, there are also senior managers 
that are already appointed on the system, Honorable Chair. Uh, about New Gala, is New Gala pre-entry program going to retrain or reskill those uh, senior managers? I thank you, Con Con Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Som. Um, Honorable Soma. Honorable Soma, we don't hear you. Honorable Soma. Chair. Chair Person, can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you very much. Just a quick one. I'm sorry about that. One is to welcome uh, the professor, the principal of NSG. Two, also, I'm told, I've seen on the message here that also we have been joined by the uh, Mr. Picol, who's the advisor to the minister. He's mostly welcome as well. Two, chair, other points have been covered by my colleagues. Safe to say that uh, in the last plan that we have, and also in our engagement with NSG, the financial reconfiguration, the funding model is still outstanding, and I hope a uh, professor will pick up that one. He has spoke to it, but not direct in such a way that it, it, it will cover areas that I would love he would have covered if he had time. So I'm suggesting that a separate presentation to talk to that, to be uh, presented to us, to say how does he see the budgeting or financial reconfiguration of the school? Who chair? Uh, which is uh, uh, it's linked to uh, collaboration or also training other spheres of government and SOEs. That it will be critical also the school also to have a quality assurance uh, system that will give the, the training credibility and also to get a very objective feedback in terms of the impact of the tra training that they would have rendered. The other one, Chair, is the accreditation of, of, of the courses. It's very critical so that also it encourages the school to be a school of choice for public service in particular, and then the SOEs. The very last one, Chair, that probably when we engage, when we've got time, Chair, if also you can unpack the e-training uh, system that they have, or it's going to be reconfigured, as you said, that probably we must also take good lessons within the COVID-19 uh, phase that we find ourselves in, which is, 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 does help us to think outside the box. Uh, other than that, Chair, I'm fine, but the only worry that I think the DM will take it up to see how do we manage it before the end of the year is the low level of expenditure vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the AG's uh, areas of focus. Number two, also that we sh the treasurer also must be tempted to take those monies back as they've requested all the departments to review their plans and their budget to do the cutting more of the hair, which is not even there at this stage. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Honorable Kabekulu. Honorable Kabe Kulu. Honorable Kabe Kulu, come in. Honorable Kabe Kulu. Maybe chair, just check with other members. Uh, also, if you can find Mr. Honorable Tebekulu, uh, as we're running out okay. of time. Okay, I see. As I'm in the, I don't see other indications now from other. Me I saw Honorable Tebekulu's indication. Is there any other member who wants to ask a question? Okay, over to you, uh, Principal, for responses. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thanks to the members <clears throat> for the 
for the questions. As I indicated earlier, Chair, we do wish as a NSG to have a, a session with their committee to take you through our repositioning a, a document, a strategy in place. And this presentation doesn't do you know much justice to it because it was it's a truncated uh, uh, presentation. Uh, there's a, also a nuance that we wish to explain uh, to uh, to the members. So, for example, as I said, if we need to expand our ability to train in the legislative sector for both members of parliament and MPLs, including their staff, we wish to take you through because we will get valuable feedback, which will influence and shape the our approaches uh, to these uh, to these programs. The the project of repositioning the school is looking at a number of uh, areas. One of them is enhancing the quality of the programs that we offer as a school. And there is a number of ways that we are implementing currently to enhance the quality of the programs that we offer. And I wish to draw members if they do have the copies, draw members to page 24 of the PowerPoint uh, presentation, pages 23, 24, and 25. So one way of ensuring quality is through the partnerships with higher education institutions. So for example, the public servants who will be joining the post, the, who will be joining our executive development program offered by the University of Free State and it's national, it's, an, it's a blended program including online. Those public servants will then have credits towards a national, uh, you know, what is called a PTEC or a postgraduate diploma. And that is important because we are providing a gateway towards qualifications for public servants who otherwise might not have been able to meet the minimum requirements of joining a postgraduate diploma program. And so in many instances, we will be offering those programs that provide the gateway. As you'll see in that page, some of the programs being offered, they give people credit towards a master's, which means these universities recognize these programs that we are offering in partnership with them. So this is one of the strategies uh, that we are employing to deal with the questions of quality that have been raised by members of the committee, and we fully recognize we fully recognize uh, recognize that. Secondly, chair, and I'll give an example of a program we are finalizing now. For us to train board members in the SOEs, 721 SOEs, some of whom have never been trained to become directors. By partnering with the Institute of Directors, IOD, we tap into a network that enables us to intervene almost immediately without us spending six months or a year developing our own training programs because they already have got the, the training interventions. But most importantly, Chair, by partnering with such institutions, we move people just from being trained into people writing board exams for them to become certified as members of, uh, as, as directors as it were. So this is one of the strategies we will be employing in reaching out and ensuring the quality because everybody who is a director recognized by the issue of directors, you stand a greater chance of performing better because you have been trained in ethics, in governance, in finance, and how to manage even committees uh, of a board. And that gives us a, a quicker turnaround time to launch a massive, a, a massive program. We'll also be partnering with other professional bodies. So I'll give you an example of what is currently being uh, you know, cooked currently. A program targeting engineers in the public service, including lawyers. Many of them have got engineering qualifications, but they are not qualified engineers which means they don't have a certificate to trade, which means in their titles or their business cards, they don't write PRNG. 
the net effect of having people with engineering degrees and diplomas but not qualified engineers is that you outsource a lot of engineering work to consultants who sign off designs and plans as well as project managers. So as part of professionalizing the public service, we, part, we, we are cooking a program where we partner with professional organizations so that we support those with engineering qualifications in government across the three spheres to become qualified engineers, thereby cutting the money we're spending on consultants because if you're a qualified engineer, it means you can sign the design and so on. We don't need to then hire a private consultant to sign a design to come and certify a marquee that has been put up by parliament because this portfolio committee was doing an outreach program or an inviso and the marquee was erected. Now you must find an independent uh, engineer and pay 100,000 rands for a person to issue a certificate. That's one way we are expanding our horizon as the NSG. We are setting up a, a curriculum uh, an accreditation committee will review our programs every three years in order to ensure that we we match the quality. But as one slide indicated, we will now be peer reviewing the work we, that we do to benchmark it with other you know higher education institutions that we are uh, competing with. About the about Can the provinces. Down? Okay, maybe let me just touch on the budget issue. Okay, let me touch. Let me touch just lastly on the budget issue. Okay. Uh, our long-term strategy uh, for sustainability is a uh, is multi-pronged, and it involves us engaging uh, the national treasury with the minister, and we wish to engage the committee on this. Number one, we'll be moving a lot more online, offering blended you know programs. This means we must adjust our cost. Uh, because we can't charge 300 rands and, and offer a program which another university is charging 10,000 rands for, which is our current experience. So we are changing that. We'll change our pricing modalities, and hopefully Treasury will then give us concurrence in that regard. We wish to charge premium for executive programs. When we do programs for ministers and mayors, we don't think we must charge them the same amount of money we charge the most junior staff member of, of, of parliament or, or in the government department. So we'll be engaging in you know, treasury in that, uh, in that regard. But most importantly, and we'll bring this before you as a committee, we think uh, that treasury well, must top slice training budget and give it to NSG because the current system is not sustainable for us. There is over 4 billion available for training and we think they must top slice. You, Thank you. The time is up, Prof. I'm not trying to be rude. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Let, let me, first of all, thank the Deputy Minister and thank all the presenters that have presented, as well as the Honorable Members for honoring this meeting. I think that was our last item in terms of the agenda, if I'm not mistaken. Can I check with my call? Yes, sir, you're correct. Uh, that was the last agenda for the day. But just to, oh. to remind uh, the colleagues from the department that the return response are still expected uh, within uh, seven days. I think they have noted that. Honorable Let me once again... Let me once again thank everybody for attending this meeting. The meeting is adjourned. I think with time we are going to perfect this system. <laughs> with time, so bear with, we will bear with the glitches that are there for now, but with time we will be perfecting the system. Thank you very much, honorable members. The meeting is adjourned. Long live the chair. Long live chair. Long live.